this week we're going to craft and talk at the same time. This week for our Advent Athens, we're going to talk about uh, the word love. And I want to take a little bit different take on it than I've done in the past in when I thought about love. Of course, we think of Jesus as love and, um, and that love was brought into this world um, when Jesus was born. But I wanted to take a different kind of peek at the whole story of Bethlehem and how chaotic it might have been um, for Mary and Joseph and how they might be wondering what in the world, how can this be? Because nothing is turning out as planned. Um, I know, and I want to talk about this because I know for a lot of people, Christmas can be hard. Um, the Christmas season can be hard. And whether it's something small like you're throwing a dinner party and nothing is working out as planned, or you're going through some major life transitions and nothing is going as planned, um, let's take a look about at how God's love is a part of that process about nothing going as planned. <laughs> so the verse I, or the, the hymn I chose was a little town of Bethlehem because I wanted to, I wanted us to think about what it might've been like to be in the town of Bethlehem when all this was happening, when this was going to go down and Mary and Joseph realized, oh boy, we're having our child here. Um, and the conditions are less than optimal for, um, most men, they would probably feel like they weren't taking very good care of their their spouse. They would probably feel like, you know, this is just inadequate. This, you know, I can't have my, I can't have my wife having a baby in a barn. This is not okay. Um, and I'm just wondering, oops, I'm blocking the camera. Sorry for that. Um, I'm just wondering how we deal with the Christmas season or any time in life when things are not going as planned and how we see God's love in that because the Bible says that God is love he says he works all things out together for good for those who believe who are according to his who are uh, for those who believe according to his purposes in Christ Jesus so we know God is a good God we know that he's a loving God but sometimes our life doesn't really look like that um, it, sometimes our life looks a lot more like, um, things are not going as planned and this doesn't seem like a very loving plan. And, um, how do we reconcile that with a loving God? So I wanted to take us to take a moment to kind of think about that and look at the Christmas story and the conditions, um, that Joseph and Mary were in when Jesus was, um, not only, um, conceived in her womb, uh, because she was not married yet. So that had to have been kind of public scandal number one. And then they had to go to register for the government in a whole nother town because that's where Joseph was from, was from Bethlehem. Um, and all of this was of course foretold in the prophecy um, of Jesus's birth. So, you know, in hindsight, we could say, well, maybe they, they weren't surprised by this. Maybe they did know, you know, that this was going to happen in Bethlehem because of the prophecy that had been spoken over Jesus, Jesus's birth. But we often have to face trials and things in our lives where we don't understand really what's going on and how God's loving hands are in and amongst those conditions that don't look quite right. But if we look ahead, we can look at this from human eyes, right? And we can see that um, a barn with no midwife, with no help, with no uh, clean linens, with um, with uh, <laughs> uh, all sorts of animals around you, without your family around you, those are probably not any conditions that any of us would like to give birth under. Um, but for some reason, in God's eyes, they were perfect. And we can we could talk about a lot about that too. But I want to talk about how God made this situation into the perfect situation for his son to be born into. Um, and how we can kind of take from that and learn from that and, um, and apply that to our lives. So, so it's really easy when life is going well, right? To say, oh, God is loving and God is great and things are going well and, and I see his, I see him uh, working in my life and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes we go through seasons that can last for a week, that can last for a decade, that can last for decades, um, 
where we don't see God's hand kind of moving in a way that seems like a loving God would move. And so if we go back and we think about Mary and Joseph and the conditions that they that they were in um, at the time of this, um, they had they had some choices. They could have said, um, no, this is not the way this is going to go down. And they could have tried to boss their way into some situation and be bossy and try to try to get what they wanted out of the situation and try to get a hotel and kind of push and shove their way into the scene. Uh, that's always one option because God, God lets us be who, who we want to be. Um, they could have panicked and went, um, this can't be God. This, this just can't be right. Uh, I know you think, I know you think you know what you're doing. Have any of you said that before? Or is that just me? Um, <laughs> I don't really want to cover up that much of the song title, but I want to cover up that little extra part right there. Okay. Um, so it's, um, have any of you ever been like me and been in a position where you're like, okay, God, I know, I know you think you know what you're doing here, but I don't really, I don't really understand it. And I don't really, um, understand how to reconcile this with, with a loving God. I don't know how to understand what's happening. Maybe you've had a, a child who has, um, run away from home and gotten addicted to drugs or is running with the wrong crowd or maybe you've lost family in this last year and it's just hitting you really hard at this Christmas time or maybe you've just lost a job or your or your spouse or a loved one has lost a job and it seems pretty hopeless um well Mary and Joseph were in a pretty hopeless looking situation with a pretty hope filled God right God um and they can choose they got to choose what they wanted to do with the situation that they had put, been put, the situation that had been put in front of them. I'm not speaking well today. Um, I'm tired, but I just, I want to get this video up. Um, so it's just going to be very imperfect. So love was brought into this world in very less than ideal conditions. If you just think about the birth and then you think about Herod, who was going to kill all of the firstborn sons um, because he had heard that the new king was born and he was jealous and he didn't want somebody to be taking over his reign. Um, just the dirty conditions of the barn, the traveling while being pregnant, having to go deal with a governmental issue um, when you'd probably rather be at home with family and friends, uh, especially during this time of your life. Um, you want your family and friends around while while you're dealing with pregnancy and birth. I don't know, right? Is it just me? Um, <laughs> um, but we can also try to see, we can try to search and we can try to see where God's hand of love really is in the midst of what's going on. And I don't know how peaceful it was. I don't know if Joseph panicked. I don't know if Mary got scared. I don't know if her pain was excruciating. We don't know those details, but we do know that those things happen in our lives and that God has said he will not abandon us in those situations. So what I'd propose <laughs> and what I'm doing during this Advent season is during this week of, of love, um, I want to, I want to look for the love of God in situations where it doesn't necessarily seem to be obvious. I want to look to see where he's actively at work. And in this situation, um, one of the things he had done was he had prepared this place ahead of time. He didn't give them a hotel. There was no room in the inn. There wasn't the ideal place, but he gave them a place and he prepared them for this. He gave them exactly what they needed to get through it, including enough bravery, including enough ingenuity, including enough flexibility, um, including uh, God's glory just surrounding them in this process, that they were able to give birth to the Christ child and protect him and nurture him and have a healthy birth in the midst of very unsanitary and unsavory conditions. <laughs> 
So if you're in the midst of unsanitary or unsavory conditions in your life, <laughs> metaphorically speaking, um, let's take a moment this week to think about Bethlehem and, and what that meant and what, what God was doing there. We can see that God was at work in hindsight, right? We get hindsight. Hindsight's 50-50. We can see that God had prepared all these places. But I can only imagine that it must have been chaotic and confusing at the time for Mary and Joseph in this situation. I can't imagine how it couldn't be. And so um, let's not downplay um, what they went through. Let's take a look at what they went through and see if we can learn from it for ourselves and our own situations. See if we can learn from um, yeah, from their situation, from, from what they went through so that we can apply this to ourselves when we get in a tough situation. Or maybe you know somebody who's having a rough season this Christmas and um, instead of just kind of giving them platitudes and saying, oh, it'll be a ride or next year will be better or, you know, uh, I hope you're okay. Um, maybe we can kind of sink down into this concept of God's love and what he does even in the midst of hard times where, where we look for him to be active and where we um, can then help point that out to people who have a harder time seeing it. Sometimes when we're in the midst of our own hard times, it's really hard to see the good that's happening um, all around us. And I can only imagine if I was trying to give birth with a bunch of cows and sheep and the noise and the stench and the pain and no midwife or nobody to help me with this, no family around. I could choose to be terrified of the birth. Paxton, quiet. I could be choose to be terrified of this situation, or I could choose to look to see where God is at work, where he is providing, where his love is evident, and, um, and embrace those pieces in the midst of the storm itself. So I hope that gives you guys a little bit to think about, a little bit of fun. Maybe, I hope it was kind of fun listening to me ramble a little bit while we crafted, listening to my dog getting on right here. Um, <laughs> um, but this is the week of love for Advent. And um, you don't, I'd love for you to create your own artwork. You can come on over to the Modern Mess Princess Bible journaling page and share what you're doing. You could do it in your Bible. You could do it like I've done. I've been choosing hymns and scriptures that go along with this the word of the week that we're studying. And um, I'd love to see what you're doing. So come on over to the group. It, the link will be in the show notes. And um, and I'd love to hear your take on how you have found God's love in the midst of really trying and difficult times. So I hope, um, I hope that you experience God's love this week. And I hope that you um, can find it in places maybe where you've least expected it and then be able to go out and share that with others. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye.